So just recently, there was a significant firmware update for the Trezor Model T, and it adds a new bunch of features to the device to significantly increase your security when using it and uh, mitigate a lot of the key extraction attacks that we've seen over the last 12 months that affect Trezors and Keep Keys. And uh, the thing with these features is you need to use the Trezor command line utility to use them, to turn them on. So this video will just look at how to install the tool, how to use it to enable SD protect, which again gives you a huge boost in security for your Trezor T. Also have a real quick look at how to set a wipe pin, uh, which will basically wipe what's on your Trezor if you enter that pin when unlocking it. Again, another useful boost to your security. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop about content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. All right, so what I've got here is a fresh install of Windows. What you'll need for this is a Trezor Model T. This will not work for a Trezor One. And obviously for SD Protect, you will need an SD card. Uh, though if you're just interested in installing uh, the Trezor command line utility, you don't need to worry about that. And basically all I'm gonna be doing is walking through these uh, instructions as found on the wiki. So the first thing we are going to need is Python. So if we just go to python.org, downloads, I'm on Windows, and we'll just take the current release. Once we've got it, we can just hit run. And okay, so we want to add Python 3.8 to path as well, because we want to be able to use it from the command line. So uh, selecting this box here is important. Installation will take a few minutes, so now's a good time to uh, go and grab a coffee in your Bitcoin mug. And if you like that, uh, I've got an affiliate link where you can buy one for yourself in the description. We do want to disable the max path limit because we don't want to run into any issues. And there we go, Python is installed. Now, if you wanna make sure that Python is installed, you can open command prompt. So if you just type in CMD in the search bar and hit enter, um, you will have command prompt. We'll make that nice and big so you can read it. So if you just type in Python and hit enter, it'll actually show you uh, the version of Python you're having, which is Python 3. Now, if you have Python 2 installed on your computer, um, Python 2 and 3 can be made to coexist, but uh, doing that is beyond the scope of this video. And look, Python 2 is end of life now from the start of this year. So um, yeah, I'll let you sort out your own Python environment. If you need help with that, just leave a reply. We'll just say exit. So from this point in, the video is exactly the same, no matter whether you're on Linux or Mac. So we're just gonna say pip install Trezor. And basically it'll download all the bits and pieces that it needs. And there we go, that is done. So the other thing we need is something that will help Python CTL to talk to your Trezor. And the easiest way to do that is to use Trezor Bridge. Now, the only catch with this walkthrough is because I'm going from a raw install of Windows, uh, it will want you to install a better browser before it'll let you access the Trezor wallet. So instead of downloading the bridge just from the Trezor wallet page, uh, we'll just download it straight from their GitHub. And there we go. So now that we've got Trezor Bridge installed, we can actually find the Trezor. So if we look over here on the Trezor, the Trezor is currently locked. Now a Trezor T uh, will not even enable the data pins of the USB connection really until you've unlocked it. So if you type in Trezor CTL list with your Trezor T locked, uh, it actually won't find anything at all. But if we unlock the Trezor, uh, you'll hear it connect and then we'll be able to find it in the Trezor CTL tool. Once the Trezor is connected, if we just say Trezor CTL list and hit enter, uh, it'll actually show us the Trezor. Oh, that's a pretty exciting error. Let's try it again. There it is. So that's the uh, Trezor that is connecting using Trezor Bridge. If you have LibUSB installed, that might say something like WebUSB, um, but anyway, it doesn't actually matter how it's connecting. So we've got the Trezor, we can see it in Trezor CTL, and now it's time to turn on SD Protect. So we just wanna say Trezor SD Protect Enable. Now it's throwing some of these errors and that might be because I'm doing this in a virtual machine. So there we go. It's because every time I've done this on my actual PC, it's never had an issue. So we can see there, it's asking you want to turn on SD protect, we'll say yes. Uh, and it's actually gonna say SD card required. So we actually need to unplug it uh, rather than just plug the SD card in. Okay, here we go. So we're just gonna say yes, we're gonna turn SD protect on. Now, I've deliberately put an SD card in that is incompatible with it at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say format 
because uh, it will wipe the whole card. Uh, again, if your SD card is formatted with FAT32, uh, which for Windows at least needs to be 32 gigs or less, and has MBR as the uh, partition table type, uh, then your card will work fine. So we're just going to format this SD card. And yes, we do want to wipe it. Everything is going to get lost. And that will actually sit there for a while and format. It won't show you any kind of status message. It'll just look like it's frozen, but that's just normal. If you do have trouble getting it to work with your SD card and after you've formatted it, your SD card won't work in Windows, I'll actually do a video uh, in a few days time that just looks at uh, what you need to do to have an SD card that'll work fine on both. So what we'll do is we'll just say the pin, because it's done that now. And there we go. So SD Protect is turned on. It's as simple as that. So now with the Trezor, if we go to unlock the device, uh, it actually just looks exactly the same. Uh, it unlocks just like normal. But if we take out the SD card and go to unlock it with it, just, you know, sitting next to it, um, it will actually throw this error here, which says that SD protect is enabled and we need it. So there you go. So we'll just pop that back in. But you do, you will have to power cycle the device because as you can see, if I just plug it in while it's running, uh, the whole thing just freezes up. So we're going to unplug it, replug it, and then we're good to go. And there you go, just like that. So disabling SD Protect is exactly the same as enabling it. Basically, you've got to plug it in, unlock it, and then you can just say disable. And uh, if you haven't waited long enough after plugging it in for the device to be detected, you will need to try a couple of times. Because I'm using a VM, it takes even longer. There we go. So we can confirm on the device that we want to turn SD Protect off. We'll say yes. Type in our pin. And there you go, device is back to normal. So we'll just turn it back on. The only other thing I'll quickly show you is how to refresh it. So what refresh does is when you turn on SD Protect, it puts essentially some random data on an SD card. That means that you have to have that SD card to unlock the Trezor now. Refreshing uh, basically just reseeds that with some new random data, which means that if someone has gotten their hands on the uh, sort of random data that you use to use SD Protect on your Trezor, um, this will essentially render that useless. There you go, and it'll ask you on the device. And there you go. Uh, in terms of what gets copied onto the SD card, there's actually nothing really exotic about it, in that if you just go onto the SD card, there'll be a folder called Trezor, uh, there'll be the device, and then there'll be that salt file. So that salt file is basically the random data that your Trezor needs to be able to uh, unlock the pin when SD Protect is enabled. And you'll also notice that the uh, folder that it lives in is unique to your Trezor T's device ID. And that means that you can use the same SD card uh, to have SD Protect on multiple Trezor T's at the same time and uh, it won't have an issue with them conflicting with each other or anything like that. This also means that there's nothing stopping you, or anyone else for that matter, copying this folder from your SD card onto another one, which can then be used with your PIN to unlock your Trezor T. It also means that you can still keep using this SD card for other things as well, and it won't have a problem. Though you need to remember that while an attacker can't use this salt on its own uh, without your PIN to unlock your Trezor, uh, it is something you shouldn't just leave lying around uh, in that it's not as important as your seed phrase or passphrase or anything like that, but it is uh, a part now of your pin, basically. The other really useful setting in this firmware is the ability to set a white pin. And what that pin does is it will reset the device if you enter it in. So we will just say Trezor CTL set, and we want to set a wipe code. And what that'll do is it'll uh, prompt us over on our Trezor to enter in a second pin that will be used to wipe the device. So we do want to confirm that, and so we have to enter our existing pin first, and then once we've done that, we can do our white pin. And just in case it isn't obvious, your white pin needs to be different from your existing pin. 
and we re-enter the wipe code. And there you go. And once you've set a wipe pin, uh, if you go to unlock the device with that pin, it will just wipe the whole thing. Uh, and it will tell you that has happened. So it won't be a mystery uh, as to why nothing is there. So the device has now been basically reset and will need to be reinitialized with your seed. So there you go. This SD protect feature on the Trezor is really powerful in that uh, one of the issues with using a BIP39 passphrase is that if you stuff it up, if you forget your passphrase or have a typo, uh, it can be really difficult to recover your funds. Whereas uh, with SD protect, uh, what it means is if you lose the SD card that you've paired with your Trezor, if you forget your PIN or any of these things, you can still use the normal wipe process and then reinitialize your Trezor with your seed. So it's really important to say that SD Protect is only useful if you don't just store the SD card in your Trezor T all the time. If it just lives in there permanently, you might as well not have it. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.